Do you like chewing gum? Well, most people do. People love chewing gum for all sorts of reasons. They love it for the taste. They love it to make their breath smell fresh. They love it for just to relieve the tension from headaches or in their jawline. People chew gum for various reasons. And today, we're going to be talking about chewing gum. We're going to do a chewing gum lab using the scientific method. Did you know that gum comes in so many different flavors, like spearmint, fruity, orange, grape, bubble gum comes in different flavors, but have you noticed or determined which flavor lasts the longest? Well, that's what we're doing today in the lab, a chewing gum lab. Welcome to my classroom, Michelle Gay Science Teacher, where it's all about science. For this lab experiment, you will need three types of gum and a timer, and lastly, a recording sheet to record your information on. How do science discover and solve the mysteries of the world? Well, they use a process called the scientific method. Let's look and see what the scientific method is exactly. The scientific method, it's a process or steps taken to produce reliable results to answer a specific question. Now that we've developed our question for the lab, we're going to make an observation. An observation we use our five senses to determine what we see, smell, taste, feel, and hear. We're going to look at this gum and we can observe the color of the gum. We can observe the shape of the gum. We can feel the texture of the gum. Next, let's smell the gum. Oh, it has such a nice fruity smell. And then last, we will taste the gum when we actually do the experiment. You will test all of your gum and test by observing, unwrapping, look at the color, smell, oh this smells oh like orange, orange flavoring. It has a really uh, good smell and makes you want to eat it. When we look at the shape, this one we observe is smaller than this one. And last, our third type of gum we're going to observe. Oh, this has a fresh minty smell and it has this beautiful green color. And it, by the time we look at all three, we notice that they're not the same. But observing gives us an idea still about our gum. So now that we did our observation of the gum, we felt, we smelled, um, we touched, and we looked at the gum. Now our next step is the hypothesis. Oh, that's a big word, isn't it? Well, even though it's a big word, it is not hard to do. When scientists make a hypothesis, they are determining what they think the outcome of the experiment is going to be. And so they make what we call an educated guess. And the reason why this is an educated guess is because we did our research already. We could have done the research process. We could have looked at a video to see how gum is made. Uh, and we could have looked at a video to see uh, when gum was invented and the process when they invented it. And so there are several things we could have done besides just looking and touching and tasting. Now that we have some information, you're going to make your hypothesis. Your hypothesis, you will tell which gum flavor, not brand, but flavor, do you think will last the longest? And so this gum has a minty flavor, a fruity flavor, and this one has sort of a, a orange uh, flavor just based on our observation. The other thing I found out during research, 
I looked at the back of the gum. And when I looked at the back of the gum, I looked for see how many grams of sugar were in each type of gum. And I found out that two of the brands had 10 grams, two grams of sugar, and one brand had zero grams of sugar. That's because it is a sugar-free gum. So now that really helps me in determining which gum I think will have the longest lasting flavor. So I'm going to write my hypothesis and I'm going to write, I think the gum that has the longest lasting flavor is, and then so I have gum A, B, and C. And I would say, C, I'm making an educated guess based on the research that I've done so far. Am I correct? I don't know. I won't know until I actually do the next step. And so the next step in the scientific method is the experiment step. This is the fun part where you get to actually chew the gum. So for this step, you will need a timer. I'm going to use my phone for the timer. You can use the uh, second hand. Um, you can use the um, a clock. You can use your watch. Um, or you can use a timer from the teacher or a parent that can time you. It's good to work with someone. You need someone to time you while you chew. You also, at this time, will need something to record on. You can record in a notebook, a composition notebook, and just make a simple chart that says time, and then that labels, that writes the name of your gum. For let's see if I said gum A, I would put gum A, and then put a line and put the time that it lasted. All right, so let's get to the next step, the experiment. Okay, so I have my timer and I have my gum. This is gum A. I'm going to put it in my mouth, but I won't start chewing until I start the timer. This gum lost its flavor for me in 54.60, almost 55 seconds is how long it lasted. Now, will you get the same results? Probably not. So that's why you have to do the test for yourself. So that was gum A. So I'm going to record gum A, 55 seconds. Okay. Now we have the green, and we're going to make this gum B. All right. Wow, two minutes, 13 seconds. Gum B lasted a minute more plus than gum A. All right, we have one more gum to test out. Now, in between chewing the gum, I am drinking some water to clear the taste from the previous gum. So that's a tip I'll give you so that you don't think that the um, one flavor from the other one is mixing in together or eat a piece of cracker just something to kind of clear your palate 
so that when you start the, la the next test, it won't interfere. All right, so let's get ready for the last one. Okay, we're on our last test. Here is gum C. Remember, this is our fruity smelling gum. How, how long do you think it will actually last? Make a prediction now. That just means you're going to predict which, how long this one will last. Will it last a minute, two minutes, three minutes, under a minute? Make a prediction and put it in the comments below. All right, this one was one minute, 27 seconds. Okay, so now that we've tested all three gums, A, B, and C, now we're going to write our conclusion because we've gathered our results. And our conclusion, we're going to go back and look at our hypothesis. And we made an educated guess. And we determined which one we thought. Now in your conclusion, you're going to write, if your hypothesis was correct, did you prove it to be correct or did you disprove it? Was it another gum that lasted long, longer? You want to tell that, the flavor. Or did the flavor of the gum you selected, did its flavor last the longest? Once you've written your conclusion, now it's time to share because that's what scientists do. They share their results with us and that helps us in our life. Now you get to share your results. You can report back to your parents. You can report to your teacher, teachers, your classmate, to someone, report your findings. Now you could carry this farther and design your own experiment. What do I mean by that? Well, you could come up with a new question about gum. Which gum flavor would last longest with bubble gum? Is there a difference? Is bubble gum, does bubble gum last longer than chewing gum? Or could you compare different brands? There's so many other things you can test out and design your own experiment and present to someone. But remember to go through the steps of the scientific method. What was step one? Did you say question? Because the first step, remember, is you have a problem and so you want to write the question. Next, what is the next step? Observation. Yes, you want to use your five senses to make an observation of what's going on around you or with the experiment that you are presenting. What's going on? The next step, did you say research? That is correct. You're going to research your problem. You're going to find out as much information as you can to help you for the next step, which is hypothesis. The hypothesis is your educated guess based on your research. Now that you've written your hypothesis, what are you going to do next? Experiment. Now you're going to test out your hypothesis to prove or disprove your hypothesis. Once you get your experiment done and you've gathered or collected your data, you're going to do the final part, which we call the conclusion. Very good. All right, guys, I hope you had fun doing this gum lab. And I will leave a link below for a recording sheet that you can print out and complete your information. I hope you enjoyed this experiment and I look forward to seeing you next time in my video. Remember to come on back to my channel, Michelle Gay Science Teacher. See you next time.